next warm up is going to be for ground work. So most of the warm up is going to be focused on ground activities. First, let's get those legs warmed up with some sinking elbows, alternating sides. Let's do 20. Each knee, sun, chi, go, rok, shichi, hachi, ku, ju, juichi, juni, ju san, ju shi, ju go, ju rok, ju shichi, ju hachi, ju ku, niju. All right, nice. Hopefully those legs are nice and warm because the first thing we're going to do is knee walking. He's a rookie. If you've never done knee walking before, it's not that difficult. It just takes a little while to get used to. So you always put your foot down before your knee. That way you can control how hard your knee hits the ground. And then you bring the opposite knee up and point it the direction you want to go. Once again, foot first, then knee. And if you keep your heels together in the back, then you'll be able to move the direction you want fluidly and smoothly. If you have bad knees or hardwood floors, this exercise might be a little tricky. But if not, I highly encourage you to practice He's a Rookie, especially now that you have extra time at home to practice because it's super important to your ability to being able to move on the ground. When you get good at Hizuruki, you can also do backwards. Once again, you want to point your knee the direction you're going. So point your knee the direction you're going even if it's backwards. You can also do spinning. That way you can go any direction you want. So go ahead and pause the video now and work on He's a Rookie. Welcome back. I hope your He's a Rookie has improved. And now, we're going to do shrimping. Shrimping is another really difficult ground technique. And, to be honest, I'm not sure you can see the lines on the ground. But if not, imagine that there is a line that goes from my fingertips through my shoulders to my fingertips. Okay? And when I shrimp, my goal is to get my butt on that side of that line, okay? So I have an attacker on top of me, and I need to escape. To do so, first I'm going to bring my feet up as close as I possibly can. Then I'm going to lift my hips as high as I can. I'm going to use my elbows and my forearms to push off on their knee and their hip. And then I'm going to use my legs to push my butt on the other side of that line. If I do this correctly, I end up in a little curled up shrimp position, which is why it's called shrimping. And now, my butt is above that line that I started out where my head was, okay? I have to turn on my side to do this. So I'm here, I bring my feet up, I bring my hips up, I get my arms ready to push. So this is slightly easier with an opponent because you can push off of them. And then I'm going to use this foot and turn on my side, this foot and my arms, to push my butt where my head used to be. Now, if you don't have a lot of space, you can just reset each time. If you have more space, you can do laps. Don't forget, of course, to try the other side. 
So if I'm going that way, I want to use this leg. If I'm going to the right, I use my left leg. So I get my feet up, I get my hips up, I use my arms to push off my opponent, I go onto my side and get my butt the opposite direction. That's shrimping. One word of caution, if you're home on carpet, make sure you're wearing long sleeves and long pants or you will get rug burn. All right, practice the shrimping. It's a very important skill to defending yourself on the ground.
The trick to this drill is keeping your weight low, so legs spread apart and weight down the entire drill. Now we're going to outrigger, which means we're putting the bottom of our foot flat on the ground and our knee pointed up. Without raising up, we're going to kick through into a reverse scarf position. Then our knee kicks over, back to a low stays up. Outrigger, kick through, kick over. The whole time staying low, not rising up. We can do the same on the opposite. Outrigger, kick through, kick over. Outrigger, kick through, kick over. You can also add rear circle rolls that go straight into the kick through position. If you're familiar with that, then you have enough space. So practice the outrigger drill now and focus on staying low and not rising up in between each transition because giving your opponent space is giving them an escape or a chance to strike. Okay, outrigger drill. All right, camera, let's work on those arm circles. As you all know, they're super important to the entire curriculum. So let's start with inside arm circles. If you're new to arm circles, it's like you're scooping water and then you splash it away. Scoop water, splash it away. And then just make sure you're moving at the hips so that if you freeze anywhere during these arm circles, you're still in your workspace. Remember, we always want to follow read. No. Natural law. It, it doesn't matter if you go. It's okay. So you I judge. Oh, you got it. These are also your blocks and your crescent fairies. So if you stopped and looked at your arm, right, you have all the blocks in the system, all the fairies in the system. Let's switch the other direction. Your arm should be in your workspace. So make sure you're turning at the hips. You can also reach out with these and have more of a three-dimensional triangle to your workspace. And you can add footwork. So I can add my crescent kicks, or sorry, crescent steps. I could add shuffles. I could go back and forth. So really play with those arm circles now that you have time. And make them soft and flowing and making sure that you're always staying in your workspace. All right, arm circles. Okay, we'll uh, first do uh, left side forward. Just do you know, a fighting posture. Do a you got your basic. Okay, relax. Good, good. All, right. All we'll do on the count, we'll do them you know, uh, left side forward and right side forward. Is uh, a short, a short, uh, a jab, a jun, junski, junski, and a, uh, a jab with a shuffle, and then recover. So you take a step. When when I do the step, this is technically this is called junski, short, 
thrust, but uh, in empty hands, if you don't have a sword or a knife, a thrust means a punch. Junsky Nawashi with the step. So if, uh, the, if uh, Dan's a bad guy, the, and I'm here, I can't reach him, he can't reach me. So I start to launch the punch and take a step to close the distance, try the punch, and then step back. So that's a Junsky Nawashi. Okay? I uh, start to launch the punch before I step and contact about the time I plant. I step with this foot and drag this foot. So it's, you know, don't jump, don't, uh, don't shuffle and then punch, just back. I'll come around, uh, put eyes on you, make sure everybody's on the same page. Okay, and just, uh, let's say 50, 60% speed and power. I want to see what you're doing. Some of you and recover. sides, your other side, other leg forward. Relax. Connect. When we connect, what direction is our palm facing? To the mat. Right. So what is what is naturally, structurally, we're talking martial science now, physiology, not martial art, often science, is how to mix the paint. Structurally, what is the strongest position where the wrist and the forearm are related. But what? So if I'm, I'm trying to make a point, and I'm furious, and the point in the gill, do I, which looks more natural? I know. This, okay. <laughs> this, and this. Oh. Right, 45 degrees. 45 degrees. Could you revert to your, on your most primal level? You were averse to this. Right. You've probably seen some of this in pistols yeah. for the same reason. When we were doing pistol together, 45 degree angle. So, 45 degree angle. The 45 degree angle punch is the, uh, I remember back in the 70s when uh, this was like announced in the Ishinru Karate Do system. The 45 degrees was the uh, most strong. Well, wait, but wait. 45 degrees isn't a palm to the deck 90, right? It is. It is. It is indeed. Okay, so wrist to forearm. You rotate this to 45 degrees. Now the other 45 degrees is done at the shoulder. See? So my chin is behind my shoulder. 
So I'm launching it out. Now, so if Sensei, if Sensei's guard is here, what we used to, uh, I actually had a boxing coach, and I got into boxing because it was the least expensive way to insure the dojo. We did a lot of contact. Nobody wanted to insure us. So, but USA Boxing was the, cheap, was the cheapest route to go. And the, all boxing gyms make, make contact, you know, so you know, there was no shocker there. But so, so I, I got to go to some USA Boxing seminars, and they said, visualize that he's looking at you through a hole in the drywall, and it's just the size of your glove. And you have to stick your hand right through that hole to land all your force on it. So um, I'm not hitting this way. Um, I'm, I'm achieving that 45 degree bend. And the, the next 45 degrees is through my shoulder. And without touching the drywall, I'm going to put it right through the and just knock his jaw out the back. Okay. Right. So, what position should my arm be when it connects? I can, okay, I, if I want to transfer that force or that force, I have to have my arm bent when it when it connects. I need to. I, I I'm not merely touching. I'm not merely touching what. Um, I have to compress it. Right. right? So it need, I need to be able. How how deep do you want to compress it? That's why we control the step. So if I take a, if I, I launch this out, and I take a big step, and I extend my arm, and it, you just imagine that just crunching in, right? You can see I have pushed it, I've distorted his head. I should be, I want to be able to stick my hand out the back of his skull. Like it should feel like a big ball of putty. My hand is coming right out the back. So I'm visualizing it, and, and this is something in basic karate. It teaches you think through. That's one of the things it gives you. You can transfer force because if I think through something, you punch through an objective. You don't run up to it and stop. Roger that. We'll follow it up. And I like the. Some people call this a polyism, but I'm not sure. I've been using it so long I forgot where I got it, so I, I don't think I have the patent. They say, punches and bunches, pick your kick. <laughs> punches and bunches, you know, if you're going to launch one, launch two, three, you know. They, you want to create openings based on uh, how collapsed the guy's OODA loop hopefully is. <laughs> you want to create, you want to make him do something, and you'll see uh, of course, you know, I'll refer to boxing again, uh, the, how many of these they throw, just to see what a guy's going to do. Okay? Uh, I really want you to work on this one, and I really want you to work on the jab. The jab is arguably the most important, uh, the short punch, because it sets up all the other punches. What's this is arguably the most important punch because it's the most powerful strike most people can naturally throw. Right? This is the, this is your power move. What? Both of them, short and long punch, are arguably the most important punches because in a venue where you're free to shoot in and get my leg or kick me or clinch and knee me, stroke me with your elbow. If we're not protected by a bunch of gentlemen's rules, you know, like in, in whatever venue we're doing, this punch and this punch create distance. This, this punch, this punch, and this punch don't. So the, if I do this for Age ski uppercut, kage ski hook, elbow, back fist. They don't create distance like this and this. And that's what keeps me safe from being clinched. I'm, I'm keeping distance. It's also important if I'm making distance 
to deploy some kind of weapon. You know, in a perfect world, and he's standing here, and I am going to label him with my hardest punch. He can hardly wait. Okay. So, I'm here. Um, my head's down, my knees are bent, my foot's flared, my thumbs are in the right place, my wrists are in the right place, my elbows are in the right place, my heart's in the right place. It's, it's feeling so good, right? How do I launch the most powerful punch I can? What most what most people do, what people that are poorly or untrained, people with poor coaches do, is uh, hit, flare the arm out and hit with the arm. Okay? How much of your body weight do you want to throw behind the punch? All of it. Right, right. Here's how. Break it down like this. I don't know, I don't, I'm not quite sure if you've been preaching this the same way. I know the technique's the same, but wrap your mind around this and see if it doesn't help. So to make sure that I hit with my whole body weight and I'm punching right from my center line, okay? The punch starts at the foot, okay? So instead of telegraphing my intent, pushing this up, then hitting with my, the weight of my arm instead of the weight of the body. Here's how to ensure this will happen. And you see, if you don't have this foot pointed in the right direction, uh, things get difficult. All right, so watch. Now, I'm not moving my upper body at all, but I'm moving my lower body under my upper body. So you see? See how my arms naturally swing into place when I collapse? When I collapse this, when I collapse this. Now, here's a, if I had, you know, one of those laser pointers, and I activated it here, where would the dot be? It would be over here, correct? Picture it right here, right? So, imagine a constant, I, I wish I'd have brought a laser, probably just for this reason, but, so when I, I've done whatever I'm going to do here, here. I'm going to launch my punch. It starts with my foot. It collapses in. I rotate this until the laser is right on his center line. When the laser touches his center line, I launch this out. So it's like a piston, right? And so now if I move him, if he moves and I miss, okay? See, by collapsing my stance, I'm, I'm augering myself into the ground, and I don't do one of these and lose my balance. So, they thumb uh, here, uh, they, I'm going to launch. Let's say I have an opportunity, uh, the, I, def I deflected a punch, uh, the, the turn right the center of mass, and as soon as as soon as this is lined up with this center, I let it fly. Whack! What? That's the, 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 I call it the, you know, the laser pointer principles. Turn your upper body with your legs. So by the time, it's, I don't know, it's kind of like shooting in front of a bird in flight. By the time I'm li I think I'm lined up here. By the time I launch it, I'm a little past, so I have crossed the center line. Let's see. That's Gyaku Ski Nagashi. Hoom. 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 Nice and smooth. It's efficient. And the, I've picked people right up off the ground with that shot. <laughs> okay. What's? What's? Okay. Uh, that's what to do. Let's uh, form up our lines. So. Shoot. Shoot. Rest straight. Don't flex your wrists.
Let's let's talk about uh, hooking punch, kage ski, and uppercut, and kind of a specialty punch. Uh, it's a hook punch to the body. Uh, it's called a shovel hook. It's, it's kind of a specialty punch, but um, I really like it because of my body type. I was kind of, uh, uh, because everybody had fought in over 30 division was basically no weight class. So the, I was one of the smallest guys in that division. And uh, I developed a really good body punch. I developed body punch to the point where I've knocked people cold with a body punch. And uh, where the neural overload there uh, actually just shut them down. Um, so I'll share with you uh, the body punch. It's, um, it, it, it's not one of the, the basic punches. Uh, arguably, there are four punches. Short punch, the long punch, the hook punch, and the uppercut. Okay? Uh, a lot of venues don't recognize the back fist. We do. We like the back fist. And the uh, shovel hook is kind of a, it's kind of a, a hook uppercut hybrid. It's like the two of them got together and had a love chuck. You know? <laughs> Hook punch is useful. The, the person's defenses are here. I've got to get away to get through or around his defenses. Well, that's the obvious uh, one there. The, if he's, let's say, if, if uh, we're in close and I end up beside him, the hook punch can reach out of this blind spot and I can hit him if I'm standing to the side. I can reach around here and hit him in the mask area of the face. Right? So if I'm in front of him, I can, I can, I can hit on the side. If I'm beside him, I can hit here. I can hit, you know, boom, in the back and everything. And, uh, so you're, reaching, you're coming in out of the blind spots. What it doesn't do, like we discussed, is create distance. If I just try to do this, there's, I can connect just as he grabs me, counter punches me, tackles me, or ties me up. Okay? But, uh, guys, if there was a move that had no counter, that's all we would come here and practice. <laughs> okay? We don't want to make it easy on them, but don't raise your hand and say, uh, but what if that if there's everything has a counter to it? And here's a here's a visual that martial artists seem to like. Let's say uh, I'm going to he said, well, sometimes guys swing this around and you get hooks to this when people are learning it and they're not comfortable with it, right? Here's what the picture. Everybody knows that blow with the elbow, right? Right. Now imagine, imagine there's a dagger sticking out of my elbow at a right at a right angle. So there's a dagger right there, and I want to lance stand with the dagger. I don't want to brush him with it, and I don't want to scratch him with it. I want to drive it right into him, right? So then, so I'm throwing it this way. Just like you're throwing an elbow, and then all of a sudden, you move your arm in and drive that in. In the, uh, a Bruce Leeism that I like is uh, what he said when throwing the hook punch, and he uh, pretty sure he meant at a high target. Lift your elbow up at the last minute. So, so this is coming in, coming in. Lift your elbow up at the last minute place that in and drive it in. And you drive it like you're stroking it with an elbow. A good, if you throw a good elbow, the guy in front of it should hear it cut in the air. You hear a little, little hiss. If you're throwing an elbow, then he can hear the air being cut by it. That's a pretty good rack to hang a hook off of. <laughs> Boom. Bam. Right, so that's what you visualize. Okay, and 
then now this will be off the short hand. If we do a hook off the long hand, it's called mawashi tsuki, roundhouse punch. So let's do uh, let's do punches and punches, short punch, long punch, hook. Fifty percent speed, fifty percent power. All the things we discussed apply. Ready. Pitch. Catch it with a fist. Catch with a fist. Hey! Good. Wrap the thumbs up, man. There we go. There we go. Hey! Better. Yeah, right. Yes, yes, right in there. Good. That one was the, the one was a little the one I saw was a little slamming. Go! Good. And again, when you do this, come way up on your foot and roll it inwards. It's short, but roll it so there's plenty of puff. If, if you're flat footed and he connects, right? It's I don't want to be hit like this, but if he picks his foot up and follows through, he takes my balance. And it's harder for me to counter when now I'm over here. Plus, he, I've turned my back to him, and the, he, he can really tee off. I, wherever the opportunity is in hand-to-hand -hand fighting, to, uh, let's say the uh, we're... We're clenched up and it's it's getting ugly and I pull him out of the way and boom, catch him right in here and it uh, doubles him over. But I need, I need to finish him off, but everything I've been doing is for when he's upright. Is that right? So the the uh, I'll ski the uppercut is for a target that is facing the ground. So if he's been if he's he's bent over and maybe maybe we're fighting and we I'll cover his eyes and pull this up and just try to pick him right up off the ground. So if you use an uppercut that way, it's age ski. If you use a elbow upward like this, it's age empe. Roger that. They're both they're both bad. <laughs> really bad to get stroked with because uh, why is uh, where does this thing get to, but you see the swing and the wind up and everything and the momentum isn't as much as the other punches. Where does this thing get its force? Gravity. This is the cool thing. Uh, Gravity is holding David in place. So when I, if you catch him, boom, 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 so this, his weight is holding him in place. It's like having him against the wall. And you know, stroking them that way. So the uh, knees, elbows, hands, you know, feet. They're, they're, so you have uh, you know a bunch of ways to access something that is this way, or maybe or, you know maybe I'm down, and yeah, boom, where the um, punching up uh, the a groin punch or. Uh, Catching his elbow upward, striking. You know. So it's kind of uh, of the punches we're doing. This is really the only one that can be used to get under your target, and deliver force that way. Same as this, same place, right? Now, when you see an opportunity, you in front of my guy. When I see an opportunity to apply it, you see the uh, I'm here. Bend this leg. So instead of bowling underneath, which is efficient, it looks silly, to get access un under here, right? The, I'm going to bend my knee like this, turn like we did with the long punch, then straighten my leg up as I boom, right? Okay, one, two, three. 
four, one, two, three, one, two, three. We're going to do the shovel hook next. Shovel hook, one, two, three. All right? So make it number three. The uppercut, number three. One, short punch, long punch, uppercut. So just bend your short leg, your lead leg, bend it, get it under your target, conveniently your target. Don't bowl it. Have it here. Right. Connect right under the contour of the guy's jaw. Try to pick him up. Pick him right up off the deck. Fifty percent power. Ready? H. Knee. Son. She. Relax. Let that punch fly out. Get that that last one. Up. You extended uh, maybe fifty percent. Give it, yeah, go ahead and extend it all the way. Go! Rock! Chase! Hush! Try next. We'll work on the uh, shovel hook. The shovel hook, like I said, it's kind of a bonus. Kind of a bonus. The, I'll throw it out there to keep things interesting. And um, it's a punch I've liked. It, it, it's really served me well. And uh, I told you before, if you can, you can land a higher body punch. Uh, it's a huge asset. It's, it's usually called a shovel hook in my coach called a shovel hook, rewind, and a high hook. If you got the guy to uh, lean over a little bit, one, retract, two, to the head. He called the pairing body head, he called it Mexican hook. I guess the Mexican fighters are uh, very fond of that combination and do it, do it very, very well. I like, I, I like the, uh, the Body hook. What uh, if David's extended extended a punch and missed me? Okay. So we're looking. the The rib cage is about a third cartilage. Okay. So if you drive this in, you drive this and land a good punch there. You're not likely to break a rib. But it's it, it's a it's a really good punch, and your your palm. Unlike the hook here, your palm is turned towards you, like on the uppercut, but it's on a sideways plane. You can do it uh, sideways, whap, or almost, almost like uh, if you go to do an uppercut and the guy, you see the guy is covered or pulls the target out of the way, right about here you can change, you can, so the, I'm setting up for an uppercut if I can Go in here or wind it back and uh, hit. It's a good, good solid shot. Uh, aim it right above the love handles. So you're way out on the uh, rib cage, on the cartilage's point, and you're pushing it in, and the with enough compression and impact, something at the top will pop. And uh, it's, agoni it's agonizing. It's a great incentive for uh, somebody who says. Yeah, enough. You know, or if um, uh, the guy is uh, chasing you, or his conditioning's poor, and he's out of breath and takes a shot like that when his ribs are apart, you, you wish that didn't happen. <laughs> Big time. Up. Oh. Cover yourself. Shovel hook in the body. So come around, let's say, 
this if this is my 12 and this is your 12 we're facing each other you want to hit me at about 230 yeah right here yeah keep your wrist straight and yeah come yeah come way up you're gonna bend your arms for when I'm really close yeah and, you know, really boom catch his you know, make a ripple and it'll go all the way through his body ready Be towards you. Roger that. Yes. Visualize that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. close enough to be hit, I'm sorry, you're close enough to hit him, you're close enough to be pissed. Right. So don't, it, it feels very natural to pull this hand down. This hand needs to be protecting your head and neck. Right. Otherwise somebody's going to throw an arm around it or throw a hook into your jaw. Ready? Go! One, two, and then hold it. Ready? Yes. Hold it out there. Okay. If your heel's down on the ground, you're not summoning all the power that you could be. You want to basically have that heel way up so you can swing that that boat anchor weight of a fist Aye. all the way into their body and touch their spine. Aye. Yeah, you, you're still thinking through the person, even though this isn't linear like the first. is and instead of the bowling, what have you, bend, bend your knee to get lower to your target. The, if your target is too low for that, stick your arm out and stand him up. <laughs> you know, put your hand right over his eyes. Stick him up. Then turn, remember the laser pointer principle? Turn as soon as you and let that punch fly, and you kind of straighten your legs. You're picking them up with the, uh, you're tapping into some of the power you would like do a squat with, which is a lot of power. You know, the, I'm squared off. I'm squared off against Sensei, and I'm, I'm uh, taking, uh, you know, advantage of his openings, and he's trying to exploit mine. The one that people don't get is the ones on the bottom that. You don't think of protecting yourself from underneath. That's why landmines work. Yes, yeah, that's why, yeah, it's kind of a landmine principle. Very good. Exactly. You don't think of protecting you. And most landmines aren't that powerful. They're, they're just enough to wreck your day because the, you know, you, and it's your pressure, your anchorage to the ground that sets them off. So, yeah, that's a good, I think, I think I just came, we're going to start having a book of Hakimisms. <laughs> Not just from for Bali, is it? <laughs> so yeah, it's like like for exactly that reason, it's, it you know comes up. But if you want to get under, if you want to get under to, to get that target, especially if he's protecting himself, and you see how a person protecting himself with their elbows out uh, really uh, would uh, really take this technique, where as opposed to uh, Keeping your body into your silhouette, you see, I've got to be a lot more precise. If I'm a lot more precise, then it slows me down. Is it easier if I had a complicated slalom route to drive in a race car? It would be easier at 30 or 80 miles an hour. I'd probably get it right at 30. So, and if I slow down to get it right, uh, it's 
uh, not going to hit with as much impact. Okay. This guy, you, he would say something. Wrap your mind around uh, this. He said, "There's uh, no such thing as speed. Just better ways of getting there first. Have you heard this? Yes, you have. See the Scott Belson. Huh? See the Scott Belson. Oh, okay. You go, well, he would have heard it. Yeah, he, he has plenty of time under. No such thing as speed. There's better ways of getting there first. So he kind of the duality that, uh, that what he my take on it is that there's no such thing as speed. There's timing. But you could also read it or interpret it as there's no such thing as speed. Just timing and being in the right place. Timing and position. So um, that's. But and here's the cool part is uh, if you have those attributes, if you have timing and you launch your, your counteroffensive from good positions, the person on the receiving end says, uh, uh, man, has he, has he got fast hands? He perceives it as fast because uh, you were able to do things before he could react. So in his mind, it registered as speed. So, so, something for you to think about when we're looking at the big picture of you know, the science of striking. So, we're doing our, uh, uh, our punches. There's great value, uh, you may have noticed, in doing it one side and doing it the other. You treat it, you treat it exactly the same. What are the advantages to doing it on both sides, in your mind? Speak up. You balance, you balance it out. You balance both sides. Correct. Correct. You're using both sides of your brain, and the thing is, there's not many, there's not many undertakings in our lives where we can do that. We, everything kind of favors, you know, the right-handed approach, and so I like to, uh, you know, practice left-handed too, and. The, once I start practicing left-handed, it gets to feel so comfortable that uh, people thought I was left-handed. You know, um, at the range, sometimes I have left-handed day where every operation on my weapons platform is done left. -handed. I even have left-handed holsters. Everything is mirror-imaged just to use that side of the brain and program it. Okay. How about in? Uh, do you think in a street brawl or? kickboxing or MMA, that uh, if you're going to use your legs and you're going to do movement, that you don't get turned around, that you don't do a kick and have to fight from here. How about if you're completely comfortable with that and you don't have to pause and realign yourself, right? How about in, uh, you claim to study self-defense, but you're not comfortable with doing this. Well, what happens when one guy you take care of is here and the other, the other guy is right here and you have to, you don't have the luxury of turning or you don't have the room to turn on so many levels. It behooves you to develop both sides. I want you to be fighting ambidextrous. Okay? If you're bad on both sides, then that's ambidextrous. <laughs> Don't be ambidextrous. He's, he's, he's so bad, he's bad, he can't fight with either side. <laughs> Don't be that guy. Next, so we're going to do our drills. Uh, if you want to do them for cardio, uh, get yourself a timer. Uh, start with two minutes. If you start with two minutes, uh, uh, then go to three. Yeah, and remember, we're doing it where I come from. We're doing this at altitude. So uh, let's say I just want to work on one, two, three combination and one, two, three combination, right? So uh, I usually get uh, David behind here, and he's pushing the guy uh, into me like a like a, a guy like a a guy uh, asserting himself, right? So, yeah, it doesn't have to be. He's not that aggressive. <laughs> <laughs>
If he's that aggressive, I'm not making uh, an impression. <laughs> uh, I, I, I love this drill, and you can do it in a line training. You can do three minutes, so let, let's just imagine three minutes. So uh, David can call out a number from, well, the highest number is usually five, and the lowest number is usually two. Yeah, so you call out, and I'll hit with you know, that number. So you say three. Three. Yeah. One, two, three, back, right? Yeah. yeah, you can turn them, or I can turn them. I'm adjusting, right? Two. Four. One. Two. So you do, and you do that just for three minutes, right? Then, now, you, you can say no kicks, or we'll do uh, mixed. So there's kicks. Boom, 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 right? Then you say, uh, last round, right? Which takes more energy, kicking or punching? Kicking, kicking, kicking. Right? But I'm going for cardio, so. Last round is, uh, I just do one, and uh, everything's got to be kicks on the last round. You say, whoa, you know, you have guys uh, just sucking the O's, and it's great. Great cardio, and you're getting your um, you're getting your reps in. My students look a little worried since I. <laughs> <laughs> Very worried. <laughs> uh, we're talking about cardio. Uh, we've we've been doing some this week uh, on, uh, uh, on uh, pads, so I think they're they're worried about what's going to happen next week. So in these seeds, then I leave. Then I leave. Don't look at guys. Yeah. So uh, that's really good. Another way to drill. Throw this out. And this is the way, I, I'll tell you, uh, this is one of the best investments you, you can make. I love these things. These are the best things that come along in a, in a long time. Some of the stuff we, you know, used to do compared to the merit of training with these, uh, these, are, these things are really good. The other thing is uh, with your three punch combos. Do two fast and one as hard as you can throw it. So, you know, it might be one, two, three, or one, two, three. You know, so you do one, you go for the knockout, and two, you kind of set up. One, two, three. You know, one, two, three. But, or we say, okay, uh, two rounds as fast as you can throw them. I say, okay. Next round, as hard as you can throw us. You know, do it like that. So you could do. So let's say you do five rounds. Start off. Uh, two rounds, as fast as you can go. One round in the middle. One punch hard as you can throw, the other two set up. Right? Last two rounds. Hard as you can throw. Boom, boom. That way. Two rounds of that. Expand your ribs. Man, you know, feels good. Yeah, that's that's the way to use the guy. If you're really sadistic, say, oh, bonus round. I forgot about it. Tricks only. Boom. Yeah. Two. One. Two. Right, set, set up, set ups, <clears throat> roundhouse, you know, whatever. Um, I think this stuff has its place, and I recommend it for you, because if you, 
uh, uh, go out and defend yourselves and, and, and do exactly what you're, you were shown. Uh, you could injure yourself if you lack this training. The other good thing is the, the knuckle, I believe in the knuckle push-up. So when I learned, when I first did the knuckle push-up, we did it on a hard tile floor at the YMCA, and I was told incorrectly it was uh, to develop the calluses on the external part of the skin and, and everything. And I, I mean, a, a callus will help, but it's not a, a deal maker or a deal breaker if I lose a piece of skin off a knuckle. Well, uh, the, the real reason for doing those and the real reason they have merit is the wrist strength. So you hold up your wrists and uh, when, uh, what do you throw behind your punches? We, all your body yes. weight, right? So what do you hold up when we do this? Your body weight. So you get your wrist and your wrist on a surface like this, you're not going to get the callus effect, or maybe you will, uh, I don't know, but um, it's just soft enough that your hand will rock into the strongest position, and if it doesn't, uh, and it fails, you'll know something's, uh, something is not right. <laughs> <laughs> this is, yeah, your wrist falls, and you, you know what, it, it's, it's really a reminder, if, if you're not permanently injured, it's really a reminder uh, that you probably need to be conditioning yourself uh, that that component is lacking in your training. Mm -hmm. And um, some of the dojos have kind of gotten away from this. And I, I, I don't agree. I, I, I think it's necessary. And I mean, just let's say you never get in a fight in the rest of your life. God bless you. And uh, look at the just the cardio, just the terms of strength and uh, the stamina and cardio you can build from these drills. It's very, uh, you'll enjoy that benefit either way. So.